within our new unit, we're going to do some trigonometry. Now, if you've taken workplace 10, this is kind of a rehash of your one unit that you had done in workplace 10, except we go a little bit further. Same time, those of you that are going to be going into workplace 20, all of these skills are going to be pretty much the same thing as what you're going to be doing in workplace 20. Because what you're going to be doing is you're going to develop and apply primary trig ratios, so the sine, cosine, and tangent ratios, to solve problems that involve right triangles. Some of the big things about it is being able to apply the relationships, identifying hypotenuse, adjacent, opposite sides, solving problems with and without the use of technology involving one or more. That is the big distinction and difference between workplace 10 and work and foundations 10 is that there in in foundations pre-calc 10 we have more than one triangle same time being able to apply our pythagorean theorem and creating and solve direct and direct linear measurements by using the primary trig ratios pythagorean theorem and measurement instruments such as a clinometer or even meter stick here's our rubric for understanding Note that for mastery, being able to solve problems with more than one right triangle. My extension into that one is into three-dimensional triangles. So let's go into it. Our first section, we're going to talk about using the ratios and finding different angles within triangles. So our primary trig ratios help us when we work with right angle triangles. These only work when you are actually working with a right angle triangle. Just as a nice reminder, this is a right angle triangle. Why? Because one of our angles is a right angle. And I'm just gonna do a quick thing here. It doesn't matter how this triangle is. Can be completely apparently can't change the lengths on it but it doesn't matter how it's rotated it's still going to be a right triangle my way and a very quick and easy way of doing the ratios is to use what's known as sokotoa now some people do write it like this so ka Toa, and all it is is a way of remembering how the ratios actually line up. I prefer writing it like this for the simple fact that you can actually see how they're related. For example, the sine of an angle will always equal the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. That's why we're using the O and an H. O stands for opposite and H stands for hypotenuse. Whereas the cosine ratio uses A and H. The A stands for the adjacent side. So I'm just gonna do one quick change here. I'm gonna change the hypotenuse to being a red color. So the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. So if I have a triangle, for example, like this one, I'm just going to do a clone. depending on which angle we're going to be talking about. For example, if we're going to talk about this angle, the opposite side to it is always going to be the side that's directly across from it. Sometimes notated, notated with an OPP, some people write the entire word, some people just use a big O for it. Your hypotenuse, no matter what, in every single triangle, 
is always the first and easiest one to actually identify. I'm sorry that I started with opposite, but it all still works. Our hypotenuse is always the angle, or sorry, the side that is directly across from the right angle, notated with a hype or an H. Of course, this triangle would change if we're going to talk about this angle. If we're talking about this angle, this bottom side would actually be our opposite. If we're going to be talking about this angle, when we're talking about cosine, the adjacent side is sometimes the hard one to get your head wrapped around at the beginning. But as soon as you have an understanding of what these sides mean, it actually goes quite nicely. It is the side that is directly attached to the angle that is not the hypotenuse. So that is our adjacent side, or the A. The tangent ratio uses the O and the A. Well, the O stands for opposite, and the A stands for the adjacent. Opposite side divided by the adjacent side. So if we're going to talk about this angle down here, the side directly across from it is our opposite. The side that's directly attached to it, that is not the hypotenuse, is the adjacent side. Now that we have that information, we have to talk about using these ratios, and on the back side, we'll talk about finding the angles. So our first thing is, what we're going to do is we're going to determine the ratios for the following triangles. Determine each angle measure to the nearest tenth. So, for example, the first thing we need to do is always identify what our right angle is. And this one, I'm sorry. And this one, maybe this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to identify our angles first. We'll call this one A, we'll call this one B, and we'll call this one C. We're going to find out our ratios of each of these angles. So first things first, if we want to find out the sine of A. The sine of A, well, sine of an angle, is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. In relation to angle A, the side across from it is known as our opposite. So, meaning, sine of A would be 12 divided by whatever the adjacent side is. Sorry, hypotenuse, sorry. Our hypotenuse is always the easier one to be identified because it's always going to be across from our right angle. This one is 15. And of course, this one would, would reduce. Both can be divided by 3, meaning that we have a ratio of 4 over 5. If we're going to do the cosine of A, our cosine of A uses the adjacent and the hypotenuse. The adjacent side is the side that's directly attached. That is not the hypotenuse. So in this case, the adjacent side is the 9. The hypotenuse is 15. And once again, these can reduce. Giving us 3 over 5. And last but not least is our tangent. The tangent of the, of the angle, in this case A, is the opposite divided by the adjacent. 
in relation to angle A, our opposite side, 12, and the adjacent side is 9. Those can reduce by a factor of 3, giving us 4 and 3, making it 4 thirds. That's not the only angle that we can find out our ratios for. We can also use the ratio on angle B. Now on angle B, all of this stuff is no longer, well, sorry, this one is still relevant. But our adjacent and our opposite sides are not. Our opposite side to angle B is the 9, whereas the adjacent side to angle B is the 12. So the sine of B, sorry, I'm just going to change my color. Sine is the opposite, in this case, 9, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 15. That reduces to be 3 over 5. If you're unsure of how to reduce that, I did all my work right there. But it still divides by a factor of 3. Our cosine of B. The cosine of B is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. The adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. Our adjacent side is 12. Our hypotenuse is 15. These reduce to give us 4 fifths. The tangent of our angle, the tangent of our B, is our opposite divided by the opposite over the adjacent. Our opposite side is 9. The adjacent is 12, and these reduce to be 3 and 4, which means the tangent of B is 3 quarters. Now you'll notice that there's some special relationships in here. We delve into them a little bit further in pre-calculus 20, especially talking about the relationships between different angles. So that relationship, in case you're wondering, we'll kind of talk about special triangles. I do it a little bit differently. But you may be asking the question, why aren't we doing angle C? Well, the reason that we're not doing the angle C So if we were to use tangent C, well, the tangent of C is the opposite or the Adjacent. Well, the opposite side is the hypotenuse, and we have two sides that are adjacent. So we can't do the tangent of a 90 degree angle. Sorry, not tangent. If we talk about the sine of C, well, the sine is our opposite. Over the hypotenuse, but the hypotenuse is also 15. We can't actually do that. Well, true, we can actually calculate it as 1. And again, we'll talk about this in special triangles. And the cosine of C is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Well, again, we have two angles or two side lengths that are both adjacent to C, which means we can't actually do the cosine of that C. More specifically, it actually does come out as zero. But again, this is what we'll do when we do special triangles. So we don't do our ratios for our 90 degree. We do do it 
for the other two angles. So this one, let's call this one A. We'll call this one C, this one B. Again, just common practice, especially when you have a right angle. The right angle usually notated with C. Of course, you can use different letters. You can use L, M, N, X, Y, Z, anything that works. So let's go a little bit quicker. I'm just going to write down all my ratios. Sign, and sign, coast, coast, tangent, tangent. So our sine of A is going to be something, cosine of A is going to be something, and the tangent of A is going to be something. Same as sine of B, cosine of B. Oh, I just can't write today. My verbal and writing are not coordinating. All right. In relation to angle A, our opposite side is the 40. The adjacent side is the 9. And our hypotenuse is going to be a stationary 41. So since sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, it's going to be 40 over 41. Cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. In this case, 9 over 41. And tangent of A is the opposite over the adjacent, which is 40 over 9. So I'm just going to add some lines. Of course, the adjacent and opposite completely change when we talk about angle B. Because when we talk about angle B, our opposite side is the one that is right across from it, in this case, 9. Our adjacent side is the 40. So the opposite side to B is 9. The hypotenuse is 41. The adjacent side to, to B is 40. The hypotenuse is 41. The opposite side to B is 9. The adjacent side is 40. Now, all that these ratios mean is just a simple bit that, okay, if we're looking at angle A, the opposite side is four-fifths the size of the hypotenuse. If we're looking at B, the opposite side is three-fifths the size of the hypotenuse. Sorry. If we're looking at A, the opposite side is four-thirds the size of the adjacent. If we're looking at B, the adjacent side is four-fifths the size of the hypotenuse. So 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 0 0.75, 1.3 repeated, 0 0.6, and 0 0.8. All of these things, same thing here. In relation to angle B, the adjacent side is 40, 41st. So almost the same size, just 0.9, what does that come out? 40 divided by 41, 0.9756 the size of the hypotenuse. And that's all that the ratios do. But we can take those ratios and calculate exactly what those angles would be. Now, of course, 90 degree angle is redundant to try and calculate because a 90 degree angle is just going to be 90. But we can calculate what the other two angles are. And that's what we're going to do right here. Clyde River on Baffin Island, none of it, has a latitude of approximately 70 degrees. Any solar panels that are used there must have an angle of inclination close to this degree. So. 
I know I talk about the definition of inclination in a further section, but we'll talk a little bit of it right, right now as well. A certain solar panel has a horizontal run of 70 centimeters and a vertical rise of 208 centimeters. Is this the best design best for Clyde River? So we're going to make a right angle triangle. This says that we have a horizontal run of 70 centimeters. So horizontal is obviously horizontal. A vertical rise means we have a vertical rise. So what we're going to do is we're going to find out the angle of inclination. Now an angle of inclination is always going to be measured from a horizontal side up. So in this case, we're going to talk about this angle. In relation to this angle, we have two specific sides. This one is our opposite side. This one is our adjacent side. The only ratio, so the only ratio that uses the opposite and the adjacent is our tangent ratio. Toa. Sorry, I'm just going to change that. I've been using these colors. So the tangent of our angle. This is the Greek letter theta. It is commonly used to help calculate four angles. Now the tangent is our opposite side divided by the adjacent side. In this case, 208 over 70. So here's the thing. If we want to get our angle, we want to find out exactly what that angle is, we're going to have to get rid of the tangent. Now, as a side note, we're going to do a quick little bit of review of solving equations. If we have an equation like this, 3 multiplied by x equals 15. Well, in order to get the x by itself, we would divide by 3, which means the x is equal 5. If we had a question like this, x subtract 7 equaling negative 4. Well, in order to get rid of, get the x by itself to isolate it, we'd have to add 7. Meaning that x would equal 3. Multiplication and division, subtraction and addition, are both opposite processes. Some people call them inverse processes or inverse processes. What they do is they cancel each other off. An addition and subtraction cancel each other off. A multiplication and division cancel each other off. We're going to do the exact same thing here. But the only way that we can cancel off a tangent is to tangent inverse. You can access this character by pressing second, tan on our calculators. So just like over here, we added seven on the left-hand side, we add seven on the right-hand side. I tangent inverse the left-hand side, and I also tangent inverse the right-hand side. What that allows us to do is cancel off the tangents, leaving us with only theta. This is my expectation, is when you're solving things, you show your work. And this is how you show your work. These are the steps that you take in order to show that work. I expect that you're showing exactly what you type into your calculator. And this is exactly what you type into your calculator. So if I tangent inverse, again, I press my second tan, on my calculator, my Texas Instrument 30x2s, it opens up a bracket. So I just have to type in 208 divided by 70. I like closing my bracket, and my angle comes out 
as 71.4 degrees. So if we go back to the context of the question, we need to have an angle of inclination very close to 70. Is this good enough? It's actually pretty good, but obviously could be better. And that's all there is to it. We can do the exact same type of thing here. A water bomber is flying at an altitude of 300 meters. The plane's radar shows that it is directly 430 meters from the target site. What is the angle of depression from the plane to the target site? So let's draw a triangle. Plane's radar, sorry, bomber is flying at an altitude of 300 meters. But it says that it is exactly, sorry, I'm just going to get my line. It is directly 430 meters from the target site, meaning this is 430. We need to determine what is the angle of depression from the plane to the target site. So just like an angle of inclination, measuring from a horizontal going up, an angle of depression is actually something that has to be measured from a horizontal going down. So in order to go an angle of depression, it has to measure from a horizontal and then go down. Well, you may ask, like, well, this doesn't look like a triangle. But really it does. You just have to complete the side. And the beautiful thing about triangles is if this side is 300, this side is also 300. So we need to calculate what this angle is. So let's identify what sides we have. At the same time, knowing we have the right angle right there. Well, identifying the hypotenuse is probably one of our easiest things to do. After that, the other side that we have is directly across from the angle that we need to calculate, which is the opposite. The ratio that uses the hypotenuse and the opposite, or more specifically, opposite and hypotenuse in that, in that order, is our sine ratio. So the sine of our angle equals the opposite side, which is 300, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 430. Just like we got rid of our tangent up here, in order to get rid of a sine, we need to sine inverse. And that is spelled like this, inverse. But what this will allow the sines to cancel off, leaving us only with theta. But we're not done because what we do to the left-hand side we have to do to the right-hand side. So our sine inverse of 300 divided by 430. Just like we accessed our tangent, we have to press second sine in this case and it accesses that little sine inverse that is right above it. So when everything gets typed into our calculator, second prime 300 divided by 430, it equals 44.2 degrees. So this angle down or over here is 44.2 degrees. A few little troubleshooting that you may have to do. First one, make sure your calculator is in degrees. 
Most calculators have a DRG button. You just have to keep on pressing that one until you're to a degree on your calculator. Again, in order to calculate something in degrees, you need to be in degrees. We'll talk about the R and the G in grade 12. R standing for radians and G for standing for gradients. Second thing that you may, to do, may have to do is you may by chance have a number first calculator. My recommended is always to use the 30X2S or a Sharp or Casio. I don't know their model numbers. They have a few different characters to them. But if you have a number first calculator like the XA, TIXA, you would actually have to type in 300 divided by 430, press the equals, and then press second sign. So knowing which type of calculator you have and how to use it is going to be essential. Now, you can go have fun.